Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to be taking you through the gene mutation section for AQA A-Level Biology, which is part of the A2 content. At the end of the video, I'll be going through a few exam style questions and also explain the mark schemes. And as always, in the comments section, there will be timestamps so that you can skip to the different sections of the video if you do not wish to watch the whole thing. Righty ho. So this is the basic structure of the video. So we are going to go over the types of gene mutations, the nature of these mutations, and then the causes of mutation. So to be fair, this chapter doesn't really level up in difficulty from AS. It just teaches you about more types of gene mutations, so not just substitution and deletion, which are the ones that you need to know for just AS. So there are different types of mutations that you need to know at A2. So let's get started. So first I'm just going to briefly take you over substitution, which you will already be familiar with from AS. So substitution is when one or more bases are substituted in the DNA base sequence, which may change the amino acid sequence. However, it may not change the amino acid sequence due to the degenerate nature of the genetic code which leads to a silent or a neutral mutation. So here we have our genetic code here. And here we have a DNA base sequence which has had a substitution. So if I get my pen tool. So as you can see, the T here has been substituted for an adenine. And this will have an effect on the amino acid sequence. So if we split our... Um, DNA sequence into triplets or codons, which you will be familiar with if you watch the protein synthesis or genes, genomes and chromosomes section. So the codon here is different. So before the substitution, it's TTT and after it's TTA. So if we look at the um, genetic code obviously T is replaced with uracil in the genetic code so TTT will obviously be UUU so this codes a phenylalanine however TTA or UUA in our genetic code encodes leucine so the amino acid sequence is different however the degenerate nature of the genetic code means that sometimes the amino acid sequence isn't changed so degenerate nature is when there are more codons than amino acids. So there are more than one codon for each amino acid. So as you can see here, the T is being converted to a C. So the TTT is being changed to TTC. So UUU or UUC. But as you can see, these code for the same amino acid. So they both code encode phenylalanine so the amino acid sequence isn't changed and therefore the primary and therefore tertiary structure of the protein isn't affected. So as I said earlier this this is called a silent or a neutral mutation so it doesn't have an effect on the protein produced overall. There are other types of silent mutations. One is a mutation that occurs in the non-coding region of DNA or the introns. So introns are pieces of DNA that do not encode a specific amino acid. Also, a change in the tertiary structure of the protein as a result of a change in the amino acid sequence may not have, an, may not have a major effect on the organism, as a change in tertiary structure might be very small. Right, so now I'm going to talk to you about insertion mutations and also deletion mutations. You will be familiar with deletion mutations from AS. So insertion is when one or more nucleotide pairs are inserted into the sequence. And deletion is when one or more nucleotide pairs are deleted from the sequence. These both cause frame shifts in the DNA base sequence. So when the whole sequence shifts, depending on where the mutation takes place. However, the frame shifts are different for insertion and deletions. So in an insertion, we have a frame shift to the right. So as you can see, an adenine is being inserted here in between the thymine and the cytosine. This is caused 
causing the, the bases downstream of the mutation to move to the right. This will obviously alter the amino acid sequence quite significantly as the frame shift occurs. But in deletions, there's a frame shift to the left. So this cytosine here is being deleted. So there is a frame shift to the left as these bases downstream of the mutation are moving to the left. Obviously chained in the amino acid sequence again. So on the genetic code, we see our um, insertion mutation. So if we split this into codons, upstream of the where the um, mutation has occurred, the amino acid sequence doesn't change. So we have AGG and AGG, which will both encode arginine. However, here we have TCC and and TAC caused by the insertion. So TCC, if I can find it, will encode serine and TAC will encode tyrosine. And then before the mutation we have ATA, which you can find here, which will encode isoleucine, but CAT as a cause of our frame shift encodes for do, 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 his, histidine. And then CGT and ACG encode different amino acids as well. So there's a significant effect on, on the amino acid sequence in insertion. And also with a deletion, the amino acid sequence changes quite a lot. So there's a change in the amino acid sequence of the encoded polypeptide, which leads to the change in the primary structure and therefore tertiary structure and therefore function of the protein. The next type of mutation that is new to you will be duplication. So duplication, as the name suggests, is when one or more bases are repeated and therefore produces a frame shift. So duplication has the same effect as an insertion, as a base is basically being inserted or repeated. But with duplications, the same base is repeated. So if you have an adenine nucleotide, then duplication will cause another adenine nucleotide to be inserted. So it basically has the same effect as an insertion. The next type of mutation is inversion. Inversion is when a group of bases become separated from their DNA base sequence and rejoin at the same position but in reverse order. So here we have a sequence ATG CAAGT. And this group of bases, GCC, not G, GCAA, sorry, are being separated. But the, they then rejoin the DNA B sequence at the same position but in reverse order. So instead of GCAA, we have AACG, so they are in reverse order. This leads to changes in the amino acid sequence as different, um, the, there are different codons which code for different amino acids. And therefore, the primary and tertiary structure of the protein is affected, so it could affect the function of the protein, or possibly make it non-functional. I think the last type of mutation that you need to know about is called translocation, which will also be new for A2. Translocation mutations are when a group of bases become separated from the DNA base sequence, just like um, inversions, on one chromosome, however they are inserted into the DNA sequence on another chromosome, so another chromosome entirely. This obviously leads to a significant effect on the phenotype, as there are different genes on different chromosomes. So obviously the genes may become non-functional. This can lead to a variety of diseases, so like fertility, etc, etc, infertility, etc, etc. So translocation has the most significant effect of all the um, different types of mutations as the group of bases are moved to another chromosome and obviously different chromosomes that are, aren't part of the same homologue will have different genes and therefore code for different phenotypes. So here we have an image showing a translocation. So the sections here are being cut off and then rejoining on the other chromosome. So leading to a significant effect on the phenotype. So now you just need to be familiar with some of the causes of mutation. The first one is spontaneous error during DNA replication. So the wrong base might be 
copied into the newly replicated DNA strand or something might be deleted or duplicated etc etc. The second course are chemical mutagens, so benzenes, alcohol, asbestos and tobacco. And then we have ionising radiation, so UV light, X-ray, alpha radiation, beta radiation, etc. So all of these three things can cause mutation. Right, that is it for the content, and now I'm going to get on to some exam style questions. So let's look at the first one. Phenylketonuria is a disease caused by mutations of the gene coding for the enzyme PAH. The table shows part of the DNA base sequence coding for PAH. It also shows a mutation of this sequence, which leads to the production of a non-functioning PAH. So here we have the DNA sequence coding for PAH, and then the base sequence coding for the non-functioning PAH. So this bottom row here is a mutated sequence. And the question asks us, what is the maximum number of, of amino acids for which this base sequence could code? Now, if you're familiar with protein synthesis and DNA genes and chromosomes, which are AS sections, then you will know that three bases code for an amino acid. So triplets of bases encode an amino acid. The, these triplets of bases are also called codons. So what we need to do for this question is we need to look at how many triplets there are in this sequence. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So this means that the maximum number of amino acids for which this base could code for is four. So if we look at the mark scheme, the answer is four. So we would get the mark for this question. So if we move on to the next question, explain how this mutation leads to the formation of a non-functioning PAH. So this crosses over with the meiosis and gene mutation section. So basically it's just asking you what um, effects mutations can have on an enzyme. And as, as it is an explained question, you need to justify your answer, not just describe what is happening. So I've written, a change in the amino acid sequence leads to a change in the hydrogen bonds in the tertiary structure. So the substrate is no longer complementary to the active enzyme's active site. So I've explained how the primary structure has changed, so the amino acid sequence. Then I've mentioned about the tertiary structure, as this contributes to the overall shape of the enzyme. And that, then I've written how this changes enzyme function, so the substrate is no longer complementary to the enzyme's active site. So if we look at the mark scheme, the mark scheme says, well, the first marking point says changing the amino acid sequence or the sequence of amino acids or the primary structure. We put change in the amino acid sequence, so we would get the first mark. Also here it says reject different amino acids are formed, because amino acids are encoded, not just formed, which is not scientific enough. So if you put different amino acids are formed, this means that um, you don't get any marks at all for this question, even if mark points 2 and mark point 3 were correct, as this says reject. Right, so let's look at the second marking point. So the second marking point says there is a change in the hydrogen slash ionic slash disulfide bonds, which alters the tertiary structure of, or active site of the enzyme. We wrote a change in the hydrogen bonding alters the tertiary structure of the active site, so we would get the mark. So you need to refer to the bonds that are included in the tertiary structure. Also here it says, alters 3D structure on its own is not enough for this marking point. So you need to either refer to tertiary instead of 3D structure, and also you need to refer to the bonds to get the second marking point. So you always need to refer to bonds when you're talking about the effects of mutations on protein or enzyme function. So the third marking point says the substrate is not complementary or can cannot bind to enzyme slash active site or no enzyme substrate complexes form. We wrote the substrate is no longer complementary to the act enzyme's active site, so we would get all three marks for this question. Right, let's move on. PAH catalyzes a reaction at the start of two enzyme-controlled pathways. The diagram shows these pathways. So here we have the amino acid phenylalanine, which is then converted to tyrosine by PAH, so PAH catalyzes this reaction. 
tyrosine is then converted to DOPA, which then can go on to produce melanin, which is a dark pigment in skin, or dopamine, which is a substance required for muscle coordination. So the question says, use the information in the diagram to give two symptoms you might expect to be visible in a person who produces non-functioning pH. PAH, sorry. If someone has a non-functioning pH, this means that phenylalanine can't be converted to tyrosine, therefore DOPA cannot be produced and therefore melanin and dopamine can't be produced. So let's look at melanin. So melanin is a dark pigment in skin. But if this is blocked, or the production of melanin is blocked, this can lead to a pale skin colour or a lack of skin pigment. So one of the symptoms might be pale skin. Again, when PAH is non-functioning, dopamine production will be blocked. And dopamine is in the question that says it's required for muscle coordination. So lack of dopamine will therefore lead to a lack of muscle coordination. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point, lack of skin pigment or paler light skin or albino. We put pale skin so we would get the mark. And the second marking point says lack of coordination or the muscle action is affected. We wrote lack of coordination, so we would get all two marks of this question. So let's move on. The, the Amish are a group of people who live in America. This group was founded by 30 Swiss people who moved to America many years ago. The, the Amish do not usually marry people from outside their own group. One of the 30 Swiss founders had a genetic disorder called Ellis van Creveld syndrome. People with this disorder have heart defects, are short and have extra fingers and toes. Ellis van Creveld syndrome is caused by a faulty allele. In America today, about 1 in 200 Am Amish people are born with Ellis van Creveld syndrome. This disorder is very rare in people in America who are not Amish. In America today, there are approximately 1,250 Amish people who have Ellis van Creveld syndrome. Use the information provided to calculate the current Amish population of America. So to do this, we need to obviously highlight our numbers. So 1 in 200 and then 1,250. What should we do with these numbers to calculate the Amish population of America? So the question says that in America there are 1,250 Amish people who have this syndrome and it also says 1 in 200 of the, these Amish people are born with this syndrome. So what we need to do is we need to multiply 1,250 by 200 to get our Amish population. So 200 times 1,250 makes 250,000. So therefore our Amish population is 250,000. So if we look at the mark scheme, the correct answer is 250,000, so we would get the mark. Right, let's move on. The faulty allele that causes Ellis van Creveld syndrome is the result of a mutation of a gene called EVC. This mutation leads to the production of a protein that has one amino acid missing. So just how a mutation can lead to the production of a protein that has one amino acid missing. So this is an interesting one as it, it's, it's not just one base that is missing, it is a whole amino acid that is missing. And as I said earlier, three bases or a triplet of bases codes for an amino acid. So if one amino acid is missing, this means that a triplet of bases is missing. So this is what I've suggested. Three bases are lost. And as this is a suggest question, it just requires your own knowledge or your own ideas. So let's look at the mark scheme. So it says here, loss of three bases or triplet makes two marks. We wrote, the three bases are lost, so we would get two marks. So for just putting this, you get two marks. Also here it says stop codon, slash codon code is formed, one mark maximum, unless related to the last amino acid. And if you relate your answer to stop codons, then um, you can only get one mark. Also here it says loss of bases means one mark. So you need to make references to loss of three bases or a triplet to get two marks, not just a loss of a base. Here it says e.g. triplet for a last amino acid is changed to a stop codon. 
slash code is two marks. So if you refer to the stop code on being um, a triplet, you can get two marks. If you put a three bases or the triplet forms an intron, you can get two marks. As I said earlier, um, mutations in introns are silent. Also, it accepts descriptions for intron, so non-coding DNA. Also here it says loss of codon, two marks, as codon indicates a triplet of bases. So, let's move on. Suggest how the production of a protein with one amino acid missing may lead to a genetic disorder such as Ellis von Creveld syndrome. So this is what I've written. So it's basically asking you again what the effect of mutations are. So I've written the tertiary structure changes, so the enzyme is non-functional. I've not gone into much detail about this question, as it is only two mark worth two marks. So let's look at the mark scheme. The mark scheme says change in the tertiary structure or the active site. We wrote change in the tertiary structure, so we would get the mark. Also here it says neutral, change in the 3D shape or structure. So this is technically right, however, it is not really specific enough, so you might not get a mark if you wrote this. So a faulty slash non-functional protein or enzyme. We wrote enzyme is non-functional, so we would get all two marks for this question. So the question is wanting you to refer to enzyme action, preferably. Also, it accepts reference to examples of loss of function. So, for example, fewer enzyme substrate complexes are formed, or the substrate is no longer complementary to the enzyme's active site. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, big or small, please leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them, and I'll see you in my next video.